Hello, thank you very much for uh, having me uh, through this virtual event. Um, first of all, I would like to, to express my uh, highest appreciation to the Southeast Asia Center at the University of Washington, Southeast Asia section at the UW Libraries and Henry Lewis Foundation for the support given to me throughout the spring quarter. Uh, and also to Michael Wallstrom and Judith Hensey for organizing this event. Uh, the title of this presentation, uh, Why Young and, Revol and Revolusi, is used to explain the main focus of this presentation, uh, which is the short and dramatic yet influential cultural produ production of the traditional Japanese shadow puppet play or Wayang during and after the period of Revolusi. Wayang in this study is specific to Wayang Purwo. Uh, different from other forms of uh, puppet play in the Japanese cultural tradition, Wayang Purwo, as Laurie wrote in her Shadows of Empire, takes its main stories and characters from Indian Mahabharata and Ramayana and combines them with Japanese morality and social views. Barry Anderson, in his seminal work on Wayang mythology and tolerance, has also argued that Wayang Purwo can be regarded as the uh, Japanese religion without prophets and also as moral compass for its community members. Always come hand in hand with Wayang is the term of Dalang, often simplified as the shadow master of, or puppeteer, the man behind the screen. However, as Wayang scholars would also notice that the roles of Dalang often go beyond arranging the whole performance from story to music and crew, they were often asked to be a traditional medicine man or to give blessings to the host, like in a ruatan or soul cleansing ceremony. Lastly, the term revolusi or revolution that I use here uh, comes from the prominent Marxist idea referring to a radical change related to the distribution of access and resources. There are a lot of derivatives to this idea, including how it is implemented in practice and in different social settings. The idea of revolution that was campaigned by the Indonesian Communist Party or PKI has distinguished the period of 1959 until uh, 1965 from other historical periods in modern Indonesia. It also bridged Sukarno's period with Suharto's period that is often seen as a Cold War scene taking place in Indonesia. The picture here is my interpretation of a scene that I found on one, uh, in one of Tristuti Rahmadi's manuscripts telling about Durno, the great teacher of the Kurawas and the Pandavas, who was killed by two lower class members, Palgunadi and Angraini. Uh, my current research is to connect Wayang manuscripts authored by Trisuti Rahmadi that are now stored at the University of Washington with the aforementioned political dynamics in Indonesia at that time and also with the larger context in performing art discipline and theories. Before explaining the life and work of Trisuti Rahmadi, I would like to explain the historical background of this study. Many Wayang history and Indonesian uh, study scholars like Ruth, Medfi, Ruth McPhee, uh, Laurie Sears, Mary Zulbuchen, and also Matthew Woolgar have argued that in the period after Sukarno's political manifesto and before the 1965 tragedy, Indonesia experienced a particular political situation where Wayang stories and characters were used as media for political campaigns. However, research related to the, to the development of Wayang during this period of rich cultural change and political shifts remains opaque, likely because of the lingering stigma associated with the years and the roles of the Indonesian Communist Party. I'm using the term Wayang Revolusi to mention numerous Wayang stories, characters, and interpretations that are used to deliver the spirits of anti-imperialism and anti-feudalism, and also to highlight the socio-political roles of the proletariats during the period of Revolusi. In tracing the global context of Wayang Revolusi, I'm using a starting point that 
that is the end of the Second World War and the beginning of the Cold War. As we eventually learn, the Cold War is a series of proxy wars occurring almost globally, resulting from the battle of global ideological influence, mainly between the United States and the Soviet Union. The tension between the tension began after the Second World War and ended with the fall of the Soviet Union in 1989, but unlikely restarting with what is currently happening in Ukraine. Uh, on April 18, 1955, uh, formerly colonized country leaders gathered in Bandung, Indonesia to support each other's national revolution and development agenda. They agreed on being neutral in the Cold War and pursued a non-aligned movement. A year later, Indonesia held its first general election. Out of surprise, the Indonesian Communist Party claimed the fourth most popular vote, making them the biggest Communist Party in the world. Lekra, whose founders include two PKI leaders, Aidit and Nyoto, helped promote the party through various cultural events that attracted big mass. On August 17, 1959, Sukarno abolished the parliament and introduced his radical domestic maneuver called Manifesto Politik Uzdek. His manifesto includes a return to the, 19, to the 1945 constitution, Indonesian socialism, guided democracy, guided economy, and national identity. In response to this maneuver, Lekras general secretary, Jubar Ayub, introduced Lekras new political idea, ideology, that is uh, politics as commander. He, is, he also stated that in front of the National Assembly in 1960 that culture should be positioned as force and instrument in politics. With the new premise, Lekra framed themselves as the defender of Sukarno's political manifesto. When defending the national arts and culture from global influences, Lekra members were not hesitant to close theaters showing Western movies and to call liberal artists anti-revolutionary and anti-Sukarno. Tragically, the situation changed in 1965 after six army generals murdered on the dawn of the October 1st. The army, the army immediately uh, took control of public information and framed the Indonesian Communist Party as behind the killings. As a result, millions of alleged communists, including Lekra members, were brutally murdered and are arrested, then exiled to rehabilitation camps in Buru and Plantungan. In 1966, General Suharto took over the country's leadership from Sukarno through a swift movement using a March 11th order or Super Samar. The United States helped cover the brutal killings of the alleged communists from global attention, even allocated resources to support anti-communist narratives. This marks the end of the revolution period in Indonesia. Uh, the effort to modernize the Japanese Wayang tradition began shortly after Sukarno's political manifesto on August 17, 1959. Among the first ideas was to introduce an Indonesian language Wayang. This is indeed a very radical idea. For its supporters, performing Wayang using Indonesian language would promote Wayang as a national art and also to diminish the feudal hierarchy in Wayang tradition. In the past, Wayang was only performed in palaces or by the invitation of rich people, thus not accessible to the low class people. Unlike the Indonesian language, Japanese language recognized hierarchical orders of Ngoko, Kromo, and Kromo Ingil that are also manifested in Wayang stories. Indonesian language Wayang was seen as a perfect starting point for the complete modernization of Wayang. Ruth McPhee, in, in her 1986 article, captured moments when the idea of moderniz modernizing Wayang sparked controversies uh, among PKI and Lekra leaders. PKI chairman Aidit and Lekra general secretary uh, Yubar Ayub supports, uh, supported the modernization while two influential PKI Politburo members, Sakirman and Sudisman, opposed it. Later, Sarkirman tried to calm the tension by proposing a soft approach to the modernization of Wayang. In his book, Wayang Purwo and Asal Usul dan Perkembangannya, published by Lekra in 1961, Sarkirman proposed several innovations to modernize the tradition. 
This includes shortening the performance duration, promoting wayang in its original language of Japanese to other cultural groups, perfecting the interpretation of wayang stories to uh, accommodate development and revolution missions, modifying or creating new stories to include Sukarno's political manifesto and expanding the roles of non-elite and uh, non-elite and non-hero characters, including the Punokawan. In October 1963, a group of glove puppet play from China visited Indonesia under the invitation of Gerwani, an Indonesian-based feminist organization. These puppet artists shared their success stories in transforming puppet play from a royal performance to people's performance. They even used puppet play to communicate modern ideas and for children's character education. Taking inspiration from their success stories, I did, the PKI chairman once again called for a total revolution to the Wayang tradition during the 1964 Conference of Revolutionary Arts and Culture. Many puppeteers affiliated with Lekra later uh, would engage in the movement to modernize Wayang. As reported by Harian Rakyat, a newspaper that is politically affiliated with uh, the PKI, progressive, da progressive dalang including Trisuti Rahmadi, Mulyadi Mulyo Sabdo, Yusri, Nyisutiah, Army, and Suwarno, pioneered new interventions to the tradition. Trisuti had been known for cutting the performance duration from all nighter into only four hours. On April 25, 1963, Mulyadi Mulyo Sabdo performed a play titled Kalimantoro at the Radio Republic of at the, at the Radio of the Republic of Indonesia. This play mocked Malaysia, Malaysian leaders who supported the idea of federation and supported Sukarno's confrontation. During Lekras Regional Conference in 1965, Tristuti Rahmadi and two other dalang performed wayang collectively using a very large screen. And these modifications were mentioned by Harian Rakyat as a revolution in Wayang tradition. <clears throat> the Communist Party's Daily also wrote on February 7, 1965, that Dalang, who supported the revolution agenda and used Wayang as a means of struggle, gained massive popularity compared to the old style classicist Dalang. Born in 1939 from a family of shadow masters, K. Trisuti Rahmadi Surya Saputro began performing all night when he was 15 years old. In 1963, when he was only 24 years old, he won the national dalang competition and was invited to perform at the National Palace in front of the, in front of the Indonesian president, Sukarno. He was given the name Surya Saputro by the president. According to Hersi Setiawan, a former political prisoner, Tristuti was a member of the Institute of People's Culture, or LECRA, serving as the secretary of the organization's branch in Purwodadi. This claim may need some verification, considering that LECRA didn't have a member ID that makes it hard to trace. As a LECRA member, Tristuti joined the effort to modernize Wayang and was named as the pioneer. In 1963, Trisuti became the first person in Wayang history to cut Wayang performance from all night into only four hours. In 1965, he also experimented performing collectively with two other shadow masters. He could become the, he could become the most prominent shadow master in Indonesia if he was not imprisoned and exiled to Buru Island for 14 years and prohibited from performing for another 20 years. During his prohibition from performing, he wrote hundreds of Wayang performance scripts for other dalang, including Anom Suroto, Mantap Sudarsono, Noto Sabdo, and Purba Asmoro. In 2001, he visited and gave speeches at many, at many universities uh, in the United States, including UCLA, Berkeley, Santa Cruz, Wesleyan, and Brown. Tristuti died in 2009 due to hepatitis. There are a total of 215 manuscripts authored by Tristuti that are now at the unit of University of Washington, brought in 2010 after his death. Type on standard folio papers, uh, they are soft covered and bound on the left edge with staples and black tape. There are three kinds of dating systems used in the manuscripts. The standard Roman calendar date month year, the Japanese modern calendar based on Islamic solar calendar, or 
using the Japanese chronogram system called Sengkalan that uses symbols to represent numbers. Most of the manuscripts are anonymous or only named Kisuryo Saputra. This, this testimony is shared by a Hawaiian scholar, Catherine Emerson, in her dissertation defended at Leiden University in 2016. Three months later, in July 1980, Anum Suroto was to perform Dewaruchi, the God Ruchi, in Malang, East Java, and asked Tristuti to create the narration of for the three, basa, three brasoro, uh, forest scene in which Bima has been rendered paralyzed. While in traditional versions, Bima is paralyzed as a result of being cursed by the forest spirits, in Trisuti's version, he has simply been beaten by the deadly Lemut Ganga. In Trisuti's real, in Trisuti's, in Trisuti's realistic version, this is the final strike in a whole series of discomforts Bima faces in the forest, from poison ivy to diseased mosquitoes, infectious worms, and insidious blood suckers. Clock in a striking poetic style, the content of Trisuti's narration was taken directly from his own experience in prison. The language borrowed no phrases from the stock literary langu language of classical Wayan. So this testimony explained the immediate impact and also magnitude that Trisuti manuscripts had to the Wayang tradition at that time. In reading Trisuti's manuscript, I'm using a critical lens called a pasamon. Pasamon in Japanese literature may be comparable to allusion in Western literary expression in the sense that it expresses its intended meaning through indirection. Gunawan Muhammad wrote, as an allusion, Pasamon contains an element of playfulness. Pasamon has no a priori meaning. It, its meaning comes from the context in which it is found, from its presence within a certain situation, from its juxtaposition with another expression, or from its relationship to the us. Pasamon, as Muhammad also outlined, is applied more familiarly within the Japanese sociality and daily attitudes rather than in Indonesian literature that, in the contrary, uh, tends to adopt a directive style. Pasamon is a celebration of the pleasure of the senses of sensuous, subtle, and playful moments. By, by utilizing Pasamon, authors can playfully claim the authority to speak from their heart and represent the fact in a form and a statement in process that is not or never will be final, a question that will arise time and again. So, uh, some example from uh, of Pasamo that I found in uh, Trisuri's manuscript include this one. So this Pasamo can be found in the conversation between Karno and Durno in the Waruchi manuscript. Karno is one of the beloved characters in Wayang from whom the first Indonesian president's name, so Karno, was derived. In this conversation, Karnas, Karno said, Iki dodoku endi dodomu, or I am courageous, what about you? This jargon interestingly comes from Sukarno's famous speech during the Indonesian confrontation against Malaysia in 1963. Another example is from this conversation between Dewaruchi and Bima and Bimo. When introducing himself, Dewaruchi, a demigod, used an exact an exact verse from Quran about the oneness of God. What makes it more compelling to follow is because Trisuti himself was a Christian. The way Wayang developed its own spiritual viewpoints by engaging with religions officially or recognized in Indonesia is surely an interesting trajectory to pursue. In the manuscript titled Bali Sigalagolo, Tristuti presented one character a cruel cannibal king who liked to eat his own people named Prabhu Boko. Tristuti describes Prabhu Boko of Eka Chakra kingdom as an ogre who eats a big portion of rice and human body with bumburuja sauce. Both rice and bumburuja are new vocabularies in the Wayan tradition and it invites further interpretation. Karungkolo is another cruel king that Trisuti presented in his manuscripts. 
Karungkolo may remind us of many figures who are responsible for the killing of thousands of people, rape thousand women, seized properties, and also burn thousand houses. Seems familiar. <laughs> As a part of my research project, I'm using this website, namely Wire Revolution, for my digital exhibition. You can simply scan the QR code with your phone camera or visit the address written on the slide. The website is currently in Indonesian language, but you can easily translate it into your preferred language, including English, by clicking on the hamburger icon and selecting the translate option. The goal of developing this website are to trace the footprints of Wire Revolution as as a genre to be used as a comparative guidance for Wayang studies research, as well as to become a theoretical intervention to some arguments that seek to authenticate Wayang and other traditional arts. In the reference section, you will find some materials and companions to understand the global and national context of the Wayang revolution genre. Uh, my second project is a graphic novel tentatively titled Silent Play. I am collaborating with an award-winning artist, Aji Prasetyo, to, visual to visualize my storyboard. And this is a very exciting experience for me since uh, this project exposes me to a different research process to make sure that the graphics are historically and ethnographically accurate. This novel is set against the backdrop of a state-organized crime against alleged communists in Indonesia that occurred during Soeharto's New Order administration. During that period, millions of Indonesians were murdered during uh, through paramilitary uh, operations across the country, and other tens of thousands were exiled to Buru and Pantungan. Despite being regarded as the biggest human humanitarian crisis in the modern world history, efforts to bring this tragedy into public discussion and to bring justice to the victims often found challenges from the state and also communities in Indonesia. This novel is designed to be a pedagogical material to promote discussions on cultural violence, archives and memory, arts and power, and modern Indonesian history in undergraduate and introductory graduate courses. Cultural approach to violence is promoted by Norwegian sociologist Johan Galtung, who developed two categories to study conflicts based on its structure personal and structural. Based on this approach, this novel explores an argument that the Indonesian military regime conducted a structural violence by providing legal, material, and moral justifications for the oppressions towards political prisoners conducted by the lower military members on Buru Island and paramilitary organization all around the country. This argument is in line with scholarly and popular accounts that refuse the official narrative claiming the violence was conducted by civil organizations without state involvement. By capturing the life and work of Tisuti Rahmadi into graphic novel, I consider this, uh, his manuscripts as what historian Pierre Nora called as the sites of memory. By doing so, this novel will also contribute to knowledge production related to arts and power by looking at how the act of unperforming has been productive in keeping the memory of oppression alive and further co-creating post-authoritarian archives. By doing so, this novel will submit to the growing public scholarships that counter Suharto's narratives and introduce alternative histories to state propaganda that are still lingering until nowadays. Thank you very much. <laughs>